So for module one, <clears throat> no artificial, of course, our topic uh, here in module one. So we have the following, no. First, we talk about what is art and its essence, no. And then what's the functions of art, the subject of arts, and then medium of arts, elements and organization of arts, and then the principle of design, no. So probably these are basic things that we need to understand. So before we can uh, learn how to appreciate a certain art, no, bago tayo mag-critic o kaya ma-appreciate yung isang art, kailangan na lang muna natin kung ano ba yung art, ano yung sense niya, so how do you present the art, how it's subject, or yung principles, or ano yan yung mga nangyari no, before we can come up into a certain, into an art, no? Okay? So, so probably what is art, no? Ano ba yung art? Of course, uh, anyone would like to say something, pwede naman, no? Kung gusto niyo sumagot, you can unmute yourself and then say something. So, do you think what is an art? Anyone? You can unmute yourself and then you can say. Wala, walang gusto mag-share. Okay, thank you. Wala talaga. Okay, so first, what is an art or an art, no? Art is probably derived from the Latin word ars, it means skill, no? And from the Greek word techne means craft, no? <clears throat> so, yun ang origin ng art, nang galing sa salitang Latin, or Latin, which means ars, no? It's preparing to a certain skills. So, that means it's very broad. When we refer to skills, we are not only referring to the skills in painting, Skills in dancing, skills of so there are a lot of skills, no? Kung titignan natin, ganun ka broad yung definition ng art, no? <clears throat> so probably, art is the ultimate expression of human thoughts and feelings, correct? So probably yung background, no? Behind those art or masterpiece. So it's something to do the it's something to do with the human thoughts and feelings. Kung ano yung iniisip natin o nararandaman natin. Example, those composer, yung mga composer, no? So, yung sinulat nilang kanta, it has something kung ano yung iniisip nila o nararandaman. Same thing with the, what we call with the painters, ganun din, no? Or yung mga sculptors, kung ano nararandaman nila uh, or iniisip nila, that's something reflect on their works, no? And that is something to do with art as an expression of human thoughts and feelings. So, probably... <clears throat> art is creativity. Tama, no? When you talk about creativity, it's the uh, being creative. It is something that you are introducing something new and the innovation or something that is unique or different, no? That's creativity. Or sometimes we use the term avant-garde, no? The use avant-garde. Avant-garde means combining or ordering the existing material into a new and unique object, similar to creativity or something to do with innovation, no? So that is an avant-garde. Now, art is likewise a reflection of experience. So aside from it is a thought or a feeling, it's, someone, it's something to do a records of human history and development, no? So probably uh, if, if, if historian wrote past or what something to do with history, Artists, somehow, they do also the same, but in a different way. Like the, the painters, they paint the history. The sculptor, they sculpt the history. The composer, they make the history through music. Something. So the art is a reflection of experience. And of course, it depicts what happened in the past, you know? so historical facts. Hindi lang, kumbaga, if you want to know history, hindi lang sa libro yan. Kaya hindi lang, na, <clears throat> hindi lang nagbasa ka ng history book or something. And then that is history. Art also can reveal or depict what happened in the past. It will it also depict history. No? And so probably in philosophy, no, one of the brands of philosophy is what we call the aesthetic. No? Something to the beauty. So art, it's beauty, <clears throat> we're in, uh, it gives delightful experience or aesthetic pleasure. So yun, di ba, pag nakinig ka ng music, kanina inintroduce ko na si Mozart, no, while waiting for others, pero konti lang. 
So those are part of what we call the auditory art, you work in Mozart, Beethoven, uh, Lynch, and so on, okay? Um, Bach, and so on, no? So it's a beauty. So paano ba describe yung, what, how can we say that this art, it's a beauty? So one criteria, if we experience aesthetic pleasure, ano ba yung aesthetic pleasure or delightful experience? Yung parang, it's something that's pleasing. It is something that makes you relax, or it is something that uh, somehow uh, it, it's there is an uh, elation or feeling of elated, no, or something ecstasy. So you know that is what is beauty in art. Okay. To continue. Now, from from the broad definition of arts, from its origin and from its purpose and from its essence, no? So probably that's the essence of art. Now let's try to understand what are the subjects of art. So probably when we refer to the subject, so it can be the source, no? Kung saan nang gagaling o kung anong ginagamit o yung misong ano ng art. So visual art usually are derived from person, object, scene, event, and nature. These are the many what we call subject of art. Person, object, scene, event, and nature. Person, of course, you are familiar. Uh, I think we don't need to elaborate what's a person, an object, a scene, an event, and nature. No, later on, uh, we can elaborate this one through the example. No, so these are the subjects of art. It means uh, an artist. No. Uh, once you do a painting, so probably yung kanyang painting, it can be reflect, a reflection of a human person or it is something to do with an object or a scene. Or maybe it is something to do with nature or an event. No? So that is the subject of art. So when we talk about the subject of art, it has two classification. These are referring to the representational of the object or what we call objective art and the non-representational or the non-objective art. When we refer to representational, kapag sinabi natin rep representational or objective art, it represents description, stories, or references to identifiable objects or symbols. So that means meron siyang representation. Kaya sa tinawag na representational. Ibig sabihin, Kapag tinignan mo isang masterpiece or isang artwork, meron ka makikita. May subject, when you refer to the subject, it will be a person, scene, nature, or events. So, yun ang representational. Kapag sinabi natin non-representational or non-objective art, it has no object or or probably kung wala, it's, it has no object, it has only a symbols. No? Symbols lang siya. So, probably pag sinabi natin ganun, we are referring to an abstract art, no? But those are referring to the visual art. What about in the auditory art? Ano yung mga non-representational? So meron ba? Meron bang non-representational sa mga auditory art? Somehow, some music meron, no? Kumbaga, yung music na wala siyang, ano, wala siyang, wala siyang subject o wala siyang, uh, wala siyang dinirepresent, okay? So let me continue. So how do we present the subject of art? So probably uh, this is referring to visual art, no? In visual art, so probably kapag sinabi natin visual art, we are referring to the painting. So ito yung common na nakikita natin sa painting, no? Of course, nag evolve na. We have what we call realism. Pag sinabi natin realism, from the word reality or real. So the artist present its subject, it is something that is real, no? that's realism. While in abstraction from the word abstract, so kung titi, uh, this is non-representational. No? So realism, it's representational. Abstract, it's non-representational. Non Distortion also is a representational, but from the word to distort, this distorting means uh, you are not presenting the reality. So that is distortion. No? Of course, we still have what we call the the surrealism, and so on. 
those are different form of distortion, no? Okay, so these three major way of presenting the, the subject, it can be into realism. Now, of course, in realism, nagkaroon ng hyperrealism, and then it can be through what we call abstraction or distortion. So uh, these three, no, among these three, only abstraction is non-representational. Realism and distortion are both what we call representational. Okay. Of course, as I mentioned a while ago, pag representational siya, it has a concrete subject wherein it, it depicts the events or what we call to describe the person or it tell a story about the event. Okay. Abstraction, of course, wala siya. Now, to understand this, let me show you some example. These are example of realism. <clears throat> okay. The photo from the right is the, uh, rather not a photo, no, uh, an artwork. Or maybe this can be a picture now, no, picture na lang siya. It's the work of Fernando Amor Solo, wherein when we refer to the subject in this painting, no, pag sinabi natin subject, of course, may person, parang nandun lahat, no, and then we have nature, and then there is also events, and in events, in events, it's something to do with the story in the field, no, yung magtanim, no, magtanim ng palay, or mag, paano yung gantang magtanim bibiro, no? So, this is the work of Fernando Amor Solo. Now, the picture on the left side, or right side, sorry. So, it's the work of Gottfried Helvin, no? So, Australian, ano siya, known for what we call hyperrealism. Kaya kung titignan mo, painting ito, or let's yes, it's a painting, pero pag tinignan mo, para siyang photo, no? para siyang letrato. No? Kaya nga yung hyperrealism, pwede rin siyang tawagin na photorealism, but it's different. No? So hyperrealism, kumbaga, it's a realism, but there is an exaggeration of reality. Kumbaga, yung hindi na siya nagmukhang painting, nagmukha na siyang photography. Okay, yun ang hyperrealism. Realism. Okay? So, pag sinabi natin realism, uh, so it's a form, uh, it's a one way to describe an artwork, no, wherein you are presenting reality. Okay. So, I think wala namang question, no? Any concern, question before we will proceed? Uh, we will, uh, before we moving on, uh, moving on? No questions? Wala. Okay, let me continue. Now, of course, uh, when we refer to abstractions, no, from the word abstract, so this is a non-representational -repres subject. Pag sinabi natin non-representational, uh, it does not depict any subject or any of the source of the subject. Example, yung work ni Daniela Swinburg, no, I, these are, na-retrieve ko yan sa, ano, yan, sa ideal art, what is abstraction art, so with this uh, link, no. So, tingnan yung abstraction, no? So, wala kang makikita. But this is still art. Pero, the question is, what make this as an art? Bakit kaya pwede natin tawagin na art ito? Ano bang criteria? Bakit tatawagin natin ng mga ito, no? Art, di ba? O the other one, on the right side, the morning light by grit, no? So, bakit nasabi natin art yan, no? So, I just admit the of your classmate, <clears throat> okay? Bakit natin masasabi art yan, yung mga yan, no? But they are art, no? Ano ba yung definition natin sa art? One of the definition of art, art is a, yes? Ah, may nag-print, okay. Art is a what? Okay. Okay, so when you talk about art, it simply means, so bakit pwedeng tawagin to na art? Okay, hindi ba isa sa mga definition ng art is an expression of human feelings o kaya human thought? Or it's something to do with experience. So these are expression, maybe if they are not expressing their feeling or thoughts, maybe they are expressing a certain uh, uh, ideas, no? but idea is still a thought, no? so that is abstraction. So, yung abstraction, wala kang makikitang subject of art. 
Now, from abstractions, we have distortion. So these are work of Pablo Picasso, no? Probably the distortion like starts up from what we call cubism, no? So proponent of cubism is Pablo Picasso, no? Sp uh, in Spain, no? So this one, no? Uh, the crying woman, no? Or lady. And then the three lady dancing or the dancing ladies. So as you can see, in distortion, uh, it distort reality. Kaya nga distortion, no? So there are different forms of distortion, no? It's either through elongation, tignan yung kamay nito. Elongated siya, no? So that's one, no? Or maybe we can say yung parang exaggeration, no? So in parang ano yan sa when you are writing a poetry, may exaggeration or hyperbole, no? So same thing with visual art, ganun din sila. So this is distortion. So probably these are the three major way on how we present a uh, visual art, no? Of course, in, new, in, in auditory art, it's different, no? But for now, we're focusing on visual art. Now, so what can we find in the subject or what can we found in the subject? First, yung meaning of the work or the masterpiece. Yung bang abstract, merong meaning, meron din siya, no? Wala lang siyang subject, but it has a meaning. And when we refer to the subject, it can be also an artist's expression and communication in artwork. Tama, no? Diba si Picasso yung pinresent yung distortion niya? So maybe that is his expression or communication to the artwork. And when we talk about the content of the subject, it can be factual meaning, reality, and then it can be conventional meaning. It is something that is connotative or denotative, and it is something subjective, no? So these are the three... Uh, uh, meaning that we can found in the subject of art. First, factual meaning. Pag sinabi natin factual meaning of art, it has literal statement of the artwork, kung ano talaga yung pinipresent niya, no? Realism, no? Narrative content in the artwork, kung ano ba nakikita natin, or ano yung ninanarate. Example, this painting, no? Ano ba ninanarate dito? So, so this is something to do with what we call the entombment of Christ. Uh, rather, sorry, uh, it's something to, after the cruci crucifixion. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, this is the calling of Matthew. You no, know? the calling of Matthew. Uh, somehow, no. Uh, I think this is the work of Rembrandt. So, kung tinitig na yung painting, if you look at the painting, literally, uh, it depicts reality. You no, know? may mga tao, and then may exena, may event. And the event itself in the painting, ninanarate niya kung ano yung nangyayari sa artwork. Okay? So, yun ang factual meaning. Then, pag sinanin natin conventional meaning of art, it is something to do with special or symbolical meaning. So, behind that art, ano ba yung sinasabi? Ano bang, kumbaga, what, pwedeng sabihin natin, what is the deepest meaning of this art? O ano yung expression ng artist? So that is the conventional meaning, or what we call the symbolical meaning. And of course, sabi ko nga, it's, it's the connotative meaning, not the dictionary meaning of a art. Kung baga sa research, ito yung tinatawag nating operational, no? <clears throat> operational definition ng ano. So, so that is convention, conventional meaning. So the deeper meaning of a, a or the reflection of the artist. Now, from the conventional meaning, we have the subjective meaning. So what about the subjective meaning? Pag sinabi natin subjective meaning, so these are referred to the personal interpretation of the artist or the personal interpretation of the observer or spectator or yung, or tayo, di ba? May nakita tayong artwork and then ito yung binigay nating interpretation. That is our subjective meaning. No? Yeah, it's the personal point of view of the artist as well as the spectator or the observer or the one who critic the art. You know, that is subjective meaning. But if you are only narrating uh, yung nangyayari, yung pinarepresent ng art, so that is only a factual meaning. Okay? Any concern or question as regard to subjective, uh, rather, as regard to factuals, conventional, and subjective meaning?
of arts? May tanong ba? Anyone? Are you still there? Anyone would like to respond? Saying yes. <coughs> yes, sir. We thank you for affirming. Now, from the meaning of the arts, ano ba yung function ng arts? Aside from pan-display lang siya, uh, of course, we're referring to the visual art, no? Aside from uh, parang decorative meat lang siya, ano pa ba ang function ng arts? Ano ba, ano ba yung ginag Bakit ba may ganitong painting or something like that? Or what are the other functions of art? Or what are the functions of art? Okay? It can be personal, social, or physical. Pag sinabi natin personal functions, it means... Uh, <clears throat> so this is repairing to the uh, vehicle for the artist's expression of their feelings and thoughts that is personal, no? So yun ang function niya, yung ma-express mo yung feeling mo. Hindi ba, uh, of course, in our modern time, in this contemporary world, art can serve as a therapeu uh, therapeutic, no? or yes, it can be used as, a, uh, uh, as an instrument for therapy, no? In, when you say as, a, uh, as an instrument for therapy, you, know, you are depressed, you are, no? So somehow, ginagamit nila yung art therapy, no? That's a personal meaning. Aside from its personal meaning, it has also a, what we call yung psychological meaning yan, no? And then, other function of art, or rather function, we have what we call yung social, no? In social, so art seek to influence the collective behavior. <clears throat> social referring from the word socius group, or maybe we can say a uh, group of people, no? Social. So in art, somehow it represents what we call the culture, the history, or repairing, or what called the ethnic group, or the people itself, okay, a social, no? You, or their collective behavior. So probably in functional art, it is created to use primarily in public situation also, no? And somehow we describe social or collective aspect of existence. So when we talk about the events, the history, so that is what we call the social function of art. Now, as regard to physical function of art, it serves as a tool that lighten words. No, of course, anything. Pag sinabi natin art, probably yung pinaka definition ng art, all human, uh, no, all things, ang mga bagay na gawa ng tao can be considered as art. So, yung upuan, na mesa, pinto, unan, and so on, these are arts. Okay? Why they are art? Because they are uh, you, uh, made by man. Of course, when it is made by God, hindi natin pwedeng sabihin art, but can be a source or subject of art. No? So, Physical, it is used in archi architectural design and community planning, you know? so that is art, <clears throat> okay? So, diba, yung mga design ng building, so that, those are the physical function of art, you know? design ng mga bahay, and so on. Okay, art can be classified in as regard to its medium, no? It can... Of course, generally, art can be classified as visual or the space art, the auditory or the time arts, and if you combine the two, of course, combined arts. <clears throat> so visual, uh, ng pinakita ko kanina, all of those are visual arts, the mediums that are observable and occupy space. Painting, architectural design, sculpture, these are visual art. Auditory or time arts, this uh, they use medium that can be heard or expressed in time or something that can be read, like the yung written essay, composition. So those are auditory or what called the time arts. Combined, pinaghalo na yan, no? Pinagsama yung there is visual and there is auditory. This will combine art like, uh, like the opera, the chatters, uh, the film, <clears throat> cinematography or or what called yeah yung movies those are what they call combined art because they combine auditory and visual art 
So these are different medium of arts, no? Or medium of visual art in particular. So yung picture na nakikita yung sa left, it's the work of Vincent Van Gogh, yung Starry Starry Night. No? And of course, it's an example of painting. And in painting, so painting has a different medium, no? But the common use in painting, it's what we call yung oil, no? Oil on canvas, palaging ganun yung nakikita natin, no? So yan ang example. And the, on the other side, on the right side, so yung medium nito, it's what we call glass. Kaya tinawag siyang stained glass. So during the medieval period, no? Nauso yung mga stained glass, yan. And hanggang ngayon, in our modern time, contemporary time, uh, rather than the contemporary world, <coughs> Uh, yung stained glass ngayon, nakikita natin usually sa mga simbahan. No? So if you go, if you are Catholic and then uh, nagsimba ka, particularly mga old churches, mayroon silang mga ganyan, no? stained glass. We're in, yung, yung window, <clears throat> hindi lang sa basta-basta window or hindi lang basta-basta bintana, merong painting. No? And, and, and the way they present the painting or the medium is what we call glass or what we call stained glass. And then another medium of art or visual art in particular. Okay, the other one is an acrylic. Pag sinabi natin acrylic, uh, gumagamit ka ng pintura. No? Uh, usually acrylic yung, in the name itself, meron tayong tinatawag na pintura na acrylic. No? And of course, I am not very sure kung acrylic nga yung work nito ni Juan Luna. <clears throat> no? This is an example of one of the work of Juan Luna. Yung, uh, probably this is referring to the amity or friendship ng Pilipinas at Espanya. Title kasi nito is uh, Espanya y Pilipinas. No? So this is Spain and this is Philippines. No? Espanya y Pilipinas and work of what we call uh, Juan Luna. No? <clears throat> and then, uh, yung work ni Sandro Botticelli, you know, example niyan, it's yan, uh, the birth of Venus. You know? So, by the way, this is a uh, subject of art. You know? So, the birth of Venus and it's an example of tempera. Pag sinabi natin tempera, usually, yung mga old paintings during the Renaissance time, ito yung ginagamit nilang medium of art. You know? Yung pag ginagamit sa pagpipinta. Yung egg yolk, o kaya yung something to do with uh, anything that can produce color, no? So those are what we call the tempera. Okay, yung ano ba, sa merong uh, anything that they can produce pigment or color. But usually egg yolk yung ano, sa tempera, okay? Now from tempera, other medium of art, <coughs> the, uh, yung fresco, no? So fresco, example, yung Sistine Chapel by Michelangelo Bonarotti, no? <clears throat> so, yung ginapit niya dyan, yung something to do with nature or something natural color, no? Yung pigments niya, yung ginamit ng pangkulay. <clears throat> okay? So, uh, in, this, uh, in the egg yolk, uh, let's say, uh, in, uh, yung came from the soil, so that is what you call fresco. Or maybe it came from the leaves, those are referring to what we call the fresco. And on the right side, yung medium of art here, tinatawag na drawing. So probably pag drawing, of course, it's also an expression, drawing, that means in the totoo, no, minsan. But in art, in the visual art, when we refer to drawing, this is an example of work of um, Ben Cobb, no? In drawing, of course, all sketch, no? Lahat ng sketch, either may kulay o wala, we can classify them as drawing, not painting, kasi hindi ka naman nag-paint, no? So we're in use pencil. Anything that it produce a visual art, and then yung ginamit, it's pencil, or anything that is uh, not a paint, no? So we call them as drawing, no? So yung pagkakaiba ng drawing sa painting, no? Of course, yung alfresco, pwede siya maklassify na painting then, <clears throat> Pero hindi ka nagumamit ng Pink, no, but it's a different color. And then another medium of art, we have what we call the watercolor. 
Okay, and I think you are familiar what si watercolor, no? So ito yung work ni uh, Felix Resinidalgo and it's describing a certain place in France, no? Somewhere in Marseilles. Ito yung Chateau de Lif, no? And very historical, okay? And yung Chateau de Lif. And on the other side, yung sa right side, <clears throat> is an example of printmaking. Printmaking, uh, parang inaano yan, binab, uh, you have meron kang mold, and then doon ka nagmamold, and then from that mold, binabakas mo siya, no? So that is printmaking. <coughs> so siguro bago pa na-invento yung printing machine, so ito yung ginagamit yung printmaking. And one example, yung self-portrait ni Albert, uh, Albert, sorry, Albert Durer, yan, no? So yan, isa mismo, si Albert Durer is an example. And yung work niya, it's more of printmaking, Italvio, uh, what we call this, uh, ano pa ba? Uh, <clears throat> and so on, no? And another medium of visual art, what we call the encaustic. Encaustic, gumagamit siya ng wax. Kaya kung makikita mo, ang ganda ng pagkakagawa nito, no? So uh, this is one of the work of Peter Brugel, no? And this is the tower, this describing the Tower of Babel, no? <clears throat> so encaustic. And the right side, work yan ni, Albert Durer naman. Title niyan, it's, it's in the form of Intaglio, yung melancholy, no? Kalungkutan, no? Melancholia, yan. Okay? So, Itaglio, like in a printmaking, parang ganun din yung proseso. But here, uh, <clears throat> in Itaglio, you are doing etching, no? nag etch ka, no? <clears throat> and then, the last medium, we have the mosaic during the medieval period. Of course, mosaic is different from stained glass. But in the process, parang pareho sila. Kasi binubuo mo siya using pieces of material, no? Dinilikit mo, parang ganun. So, pero yung kaiba ng mosaic, probably stained glass can be classified as a mosaic. Okay? Or mosaic, no? Kaya lang, ang ginamit niya, glass. Pero mosaic, it's general. Pwede nyo ba, uh, kung nung grade school kayo, ginawa nyo ba yung, uh, yung balat ng itlog? And then you form something from that. Yun ang mosaic or mosaic. Okay? And then, we have etching. Etching, so, a while ago, yung itaglio, parang ganyan, no? Gumagamit sila ng <coughs> matulis na bagay uh, to sketch or to do a drawing or sketching. So, ito yung example, no? Ito yung something work ni Albert Jewers, no? Referring to the four angels in the what we call Revelation or Apocalypse. Okay? So those are the different medium of art. Any concern or questions bago tayo magpatuloy? Any concern, questions? Wala po. Okay? We can continue. Now, from the medium of art, let's proceed to the elements of visual art. So, pag sinabi natin elements of visual art, it has something to do with lines, shape, texture, color, value, and of course, the space and movement. So, line. <clears throat> so, probably line are used by artists to imitate or to represent objective and uh, object, objects and figures on a flat surface. So, wala namang, meron bang art or visual arts na, in, na wala siyang line meron no in point is point is him no uh, yung kay work ni George Surat pero if you call it, but if you look at the pointillism later on you will realize na parang in a form of line pa rin no though hindi siya magkakadugtong no so what is line in art no <clears throat> so every line in uh, in art it has a what we call connotative meaning or what we call conventional meaning. Example, horizontal line. Pag sinamin natin horizontal, yung ganito, di ba? Straight. So, it represents serenity or perfect stability. So, makikita mo dyan yung uh, psychology or what we call yung behavior ng artist. No? Kung anong line na ginamit niya. <clears throat> And then, vertical, it represents 
force, stability, and strength. Somehow, pareho ng horizontal yung stability, no? And then curve, that's referring to flu uh, fluidity, uh, fluidity or the grace movement. And then the diagonal, it's referring to an action movement. So every art has a certain line, no? Kaya lang, uh, you will observe kung ano yung dominant. Horizontal, vertical, curve, or diagonal. And those from those lines, uh, we can draw or we can assume the expression of the artist. From the line, we have shape. So shape under shape, of course, <coughs> every artist uh, use shape in their visual art. You know, painting natural, abstract, or non-objective shape. In natural shape, shape of nature, or realistic shape. Kumbaga, parang photocopy sa natural yon, no? So, kung ano yung shape ng sapatos, of course, that's natural. Anong shape ng chinelas? So, that is natural shape. Yung baso, okay? Abstract shape, it's modification of natural shape. So, probably, pwedeng pasabihin natin distortion, no? It can be an, an abstract shape. Nan objective shape, yung biomorphic shape. Pag sinabi natin biomorphic, so, referring to bio, means like morphic, yung change, no? Oh, biomorphic change, it's the natural shape. Na parang natural shape din siya, but it's biomorphic, no? Or what I mean, biomorphic, di ba? Yung tao, yung size ng paa niya, ganyan. Those are biomorphic shape. And then, non-objective shape, also referring to the geometric shape, no? Square, circle, and so on, okay? Question, concern? Now, from shape, we're moving to colors, no? So this is another element of arts, no? So color, it's defined as the visual perceptual property corresponding in humans to the categories called red, green, blue, and other, no? Or RGB, no? So yung, of course, in trichromatic theory, ganun talaga, no? Yung kaya tayo nakakakita ng color because in uh, this, in trichromatic theory, meron tayong representation of red, green, and blue. Of course, when we combine that, we create a different color, no? <clears throat> so probably, color is derived from the spectrum of light. Tama, no? Kasi without light, somehow we can recognize things. Or wala tayong mapoproduce na color, no? Black lahat yun. So when we refer to color, so the physical properties of color, it can be somehow what we call yung U. Ano ba yung U? It's one of the main properties of color defined technically as the degree to which a stimulus can be described as similar to or different from stimuli that are described as red, green, blue, RGB, and yellow or the pure color. Or pretty sabi natin the primary color, no? <clears throat> okay, example, yung, uh, yung picture na yan, no? It represents a U, no? The red, green, blue, and the yellow. Or the pure color, uh, primary color, ano ba yung mga primary color natin? Red, green, and yellow. Correct, no? Kasi when we come, ah, tama. <clears throat> so those color are the primary color, no? Add mo yung blue, tama, bago yung blue ba in the primary? Okay. So color in painting or visual art, uh, somehow yung kanyang gamit or use it gives quality to the pictorial field, no? So, nakakaragdag siya ng quality. Unlike in pag-drawing lang, hindi masyado, no? Pero pwede rin kasi you can use color pencil naman, no? Color create moods and symbolizes ideas as well as expression of personal emotion. Tama. <clears throat> Every artist have identity and we can identify the artist through the use of color. Halimbawa, si Kalina, yung sample ko, si... Uh, uh, Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh, yung kanyang Arab, uh, pag sinabi natin word ni Vincent Van Gogh, dominant yung color blue. And then, pag sinabi natin Picasso, si Picasso, dominant sa kanya yung color yellow. No, Every artist, no, uh, wherein, nakikita mo yung uh, identity nila from the use of color. no. But not, ev uh, but not ev everyone pala. No? Yung iba kasi, they are not particular with the use of color. Color has the ability to elevate sensation of pleasure because of the well-ordered system of tonality in tone. 
yung tone ng kulay. No? Of course, in color, dapat magaling ka in, uh, when we talk about art, like in this one, no? <clears throat> si Mona Lisa worked in Michelangelo Bonoretti, no? So as you can see, naka-highlight yung mukha. Siguro kung dark yan, hindi mo ma-proceed, no? And then yung combination, it may contrasting, no? And then there is some harmony in the color. So yung tonality, no? So probably because of those combination, na proceed na din yung certain uh, masterpiece like this one, no? Okay, to continue. Now from color and other elements of arts, what we call the value. Value refers to the tonal relationship between light and dark areas. So it's different from harmony, eh? So example, yung word ni <clears throat> one luna, no? Ito, yung spolarium. As you can see, gumamit siya ng very dark. And then, uh, from the dark, there's light. Of course, yung tinatawag natin to na what we call chiaroscuro or tenebrism, no? And then, ito, yung another uh, painting, no? Or another work. <clears throat> ito, I think this, uh, sorry. Uh, I just... So, kung titignan titing mo, yung painting na yan, no? This one. So again, parang work din ni, ka, ni what uh, similar to the work of uh, one Luna, but but this is the uh, oldest version ng Kiros Kiro, no? Kasi yan ang gawa ni, ano, <coughs> ni Rembrandt, no? Rembrandt is known for introducing what we call the Kiros Kiro or Tenebrism. Okay, to continue. Now, from value, we have what we call yung perspective. So it can be an interposition or overlapping, relative size. You know, those are the perspective, no? linear perspective. No? Yan. Though this is safe photography. So perspective, as you can see, this one, it's the linear perspective. No? And then yan naman, it's what we call yung interposition. Yan, may nag overlap And then the other one, ito yung linear perspective. No? So yung dalawang ito, and then... Uh, sa dulo, lumiliit siya, no? So, this is what we call the uh, linear perspective, no? The merging of, nagkakaroon ng merging of two lines, no? In the end, no? The parallel lines merge in the end, no? Okay? Now, from the elements of arts, we're not proceeding, uh, we were not moving to what we call the principles of the science. Under the principle of designs, we have what we call the, of course, pag sinabi natin design, it's the overall structure of artwork. Yan. So, yung example na to, yung work in Michelangelo, La Pieta, no? Where in Mary and, and the body of Jesus Christ, and uh, in uh, Nuni Mary, no? Nasa lap niya. So, so, this is what we call the overall structure of art, no? So design or principle of design means uh, that's referring to the mean or way of the artist to express or communicate is or her comprehensive ideas. Of course, uh, every visual art, they have visual, uh, rather they have what called, they use different principles of design. So example, <clears throat> harmony, variation, rhythm, proportion, emphasis and subordination, and then balance, no? Okay, wait lang, no? So those are the different example of what we call principle of design, no? In sculpture, meron din, no? But in this one, we can say there is an harmony to yung statue of what we call David, no? So this is a statue of David na ginawa ni Michelangelo. Now, when we refer to harmony, so the word unity, it's, uh, it's somehow related to what we call harmony. Harmony means all part of the visual image relate and complement each other. Sample this one, no? This is my own work, no? Somehow, merong harmony, no? Kasi, nagko-complement. Kung walang harmony dyan, baka hindi mo maintindihan yung mga nandito, no? <clears throat> and then, so harmony, it's also referred to the adaptation of visual element to each other, yan, no? So this is an example. <clears throat> but this is not a perfect harmony, no? It's also likewise referred to the agreement between the parts of the composition, no, which 
uh, result in unity. So meron unity. Probably uh, harmony is something to do with that is a complementary, you know, uh, as regard to the use of color, you know, they complement. Then that is harmony. Now from harmony, we have variation. Pag sinabi ng variation, use of quality, you no. Know? And elements which contrast with or are slightly different from other that per, uh, prevents monotony, uniform, or sameness. So the use of variation from the word variety or variation, no, may iba iba siya. Example, ito yung painting ng Sistine Chapel, no, and daming characters, no. <clears throat> and alam yung ba yung sa Sistine Chapel, yung ginawa ni Michelangelo, he paint the story of the Bible from Genesis. To the New Testament, ganong kagaling, no? At, gan, uh, at matagal bago niya natapos yan, no? And kaya, it's a good example of what we call variation. Kasi may iba't ibang uh, characters or different subject na hindi siya monotony, no? Then, from variation, okay, yung rhythm. Known artist na gumagamit ng rhythm ay si Jose uh, Clemente Orozo, no? Uh, Spanish painter, no? So in rhythm, there is a repetition or continuous flow of regular visual units. <clears throat> there is some flow. Feeling of movement uh, achieved through the repetitions of regular visual uh, units. An example in work ni Jose Clemente. As you can see, may movement. They are moving from the left. Ito, moving from the right. It, and even the visual art, no, there is some movement. So we call that movement. From the visual art, particularly for the painting, we call them as rhythm. No, hindi lang yung music yung merong rhythm. Even the visual art, they have rhythm. Now, from the rhythm, we have the proportion. Proportion, of course, you are familiar with this one. No, since you are under IBE, <clears throat> it's the comparative harmonious relationship between two or more elements in a composition with respect to size, color, quantity, degree, or setting. So probably proportion is the ratio of one part to another and of the wall, no? And expressing size, number, and position. Okay, like in this one. So, so this is the main subject. And then, as you can see, meron siyang other subject on the side. Dito tatlo, dito marami. Ito, tatlo, dito, dalawa. So this is proportion, no? So this proportion. Now, from proportion, proportion of art, we have the emphasis and subordination. So it, from the word emphasize, no? The emphasis, subordination is the background. Emphasis, it's uh, and subordination reflect between the important and less important. Spanish sinabi natin, main character, and then supporting character. Concern on giving a proper importance of parts into the world. So these are the different example of Madonna and child. No, Italian word Madonna means mother. No, or mother and child. Okay. So the emphasis it's about the mother and child. The subordination it's the background. Example this one. The emphasis the mother and child. The background niya parang it's a community. Same thing with this one. Okay. Ito may background na angel. Now, from emphasis and subordination, we have what we call balance. So balance is the unity in artwork, parang harmony, no? Uh, where in the feeling of quality, in weight, attention, or attraction of the various elements, no? And it's sometimes called, what we call the gravitational equilibrium. A balance, it can be something to do with directions. This referring to the movement. Something to do with the parang rhythm. And then positions. It's either horizontal, vertical, curve, or diagonal. It's something to do with the size. <clears throat> of course, small, large, medium. Quality, yung color, tones, color, shading, texture. And then yung proportion. Yung number or ratio. So balance. No? So, meron tayong dalawang klase ng balance, no? We have symmetrical and asymmetrical, no? So, as you can see, yung ibang artist, ganito yung ginagawa, like this one, no? This one is asymmetrical, 
and maybe this one is symmetrical, no? Yes, example yan, no? Symmetrical and asymmetrical. Pag sinabi natin, oh, sorry. Pag sinabi natin symmetrical from the word symmetry, what you can see on the other side, you can also see on the other side. Parang nagmi-mirror siya, no? That is symmetrical or identical siya. So, parang na may salamin. Though this is the emphasis and the subordination, it it as parang mirroring each other, no? Na kung ano nandito, meron din doon. Yan. <clears throat> While in a symmetrical, <clears throat> it has a balance. But in terms of ratio, and sometimes in size <clears throat> and position, nagkakaiba sila. <clears throat> but still, <clears throat> sorry. But still, it's a balance, okay? So those are the different principles of design. <clears throat> so to end my discussion, so art, as you can say, it's a beauty, no? So that is something that to do with aesthetic pleasure. But when we define beauty, so probably beauty is relative. Sabi nga, beauty is always in the eye of the beholder. Ibig sabihin, What's beautiful to me might not be beautiful to you. So when we talk about art or visual arts, when I ask you if this is beautiful, so probably some somehow uh, some of you will say no, but for other yes. So that is the meaning of beauty. It's something that is relative, or it is always in the eye of the beholder. And what is essential from the little prince? <clears throat> Essential is something that is invisible to the eye, but is visible to the heart. So when we talk about artwork, you know, so probably we are after what is after its beauty, and sometimes we are after what is essential. That's the end of my discussion. These are my references. Okay, any concern, questions? <clears throat> clarification. I will end my recording. Any concern? Or I stop my recording? <clears throat>